This episode of the podcast is brought to you by New Bloom Labs. Did you know that New Bloom Labs recently expanded their standard potency panel that now reports 16 different cannabinoids? The new additions include CBDVA and both isomers of Delta 10 THC. These now come standard on every potency analysis that New Bloom Labs reports. So if you're a cannabis producer that's creating innovative products with multiple cannabinoids, you need the best, most comprehensive potency analysis there is. And that's why you need to talk to the team at New Bloom Labs, the testing lab that it continues to position itself at the cutting edge of cannabis science. Give them a call today at 844-TEST-CBD or visit their website at newbloomlabs.com. They understand the cannabis industry and what's important to growers, processors, and manufacturers. So if you're a cannabis producer that's looking for superior science and rapid results, you need to start working with the team at New Bloom Labs. Hello, my fellow people of the plant. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Cannabinoid Connect podcast, your favorite podcast that includes industry-facing conversations with the industry's leading experts that aim to educate and inform the public regarding the plant's endless benefits. My guest today is Craig Henderson. He's the founder and CEO at Extract Labs. Craig Henderson, how are you, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for uh, making time for me and my audience today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate yeah, it. Of course. You know, and I think that we're going to have a pretty, you know, a really important conversation, you know, in that your background, um, of course, you have a military background. And um, from what I've read, you you served and, and did some tours from 2002, from 2002 to 2006. So, um you know, talk to us a little bit about your military background and um, after your tours, kind of what led you to cannabis as a therapeutic outlet? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, you know, so my goal was really to go to college after high school. Um, I was very unfortunate, couldn't really make that happen at the time, didn't really know how to get into college. And September 11th had just happened uh, right after I graduated. So military just seemed like the right thing to do. I joined, I was a uh, airborne infantry stationed out in Hawaii and I was in Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2004 and 2005. Um, went over there, came back, you know, the whole time I had, I never smoked cannabis in high school. I never smoked cannabis really in the military, came back from Iraq. Uh, it was always weird to me. I was always taught also, you know, even though my parents drank a lot, I was always taught I shouldn't be drinking. But in the military, it was almost uh, highly encouraged to drink. I wouldn't say they came out and made you do it, but it, it was everywhere. It was encouraged. And it was, blew my mind that close friends of mine in the military, good, strong people uh, were kicked out of the military for smoking cannabis. And at the time, it was very confusing to me because it's weird how the military encouraged so much of one drug, not the other. I honestly was on the side of alcohol because I also, you know, looked down on people who smoke cannabis. Uh, but, but it was confusing to me, decided to start doing some more of my own research, decided to figure out, um, you know, why was cannabis so frowned upon? And in my research, it, all I could find were positives. Um, got out of the military. Uh, when, when you were doing your research, Craig, like, was that more anecdotal, like testimonial stuff where you've talked to people and you saw how it really impacted their lives? Or were you actually really finding some studies, whether it be conducted in the US or other countries that pointed to, to this efficacy? At the time, I think there's a few Showtime or HBO documentaries, and it showed these people with like serious tremors, they couldn't, you know, live their life because their bodies just shaking so much all the time. And it showed them smoking a joint. And all of a sudden they were calm and they could get like an hour of peace. I was like, oh, wow, that, that's pretty crazy. And then, you know, some Google searching. It's just like every time I dug a little deeper, pulled back another layer, it's like more and more and more I would find. Were you surprised about like when you started to have these discoveries and these findings by watching those documentaries that, man, there's a lot of like misinformation out there, right? I was mind blown. I was angry. I was confused. I thought I'd been missing for my whole life. I thought, you know, my parents lied to me. And then, I, you know, the anger just started building like, wow, my good friends, these good leaders were kicked out of the military for this. Um, like, this just doesn't make sense. You know, then I started experimenting with cannabis, but I did not get that same relief. You know, I'm a pretty healthy person. Uh, I have insane amount of anxiety, but unfortunately for me, THC does not help with that. It just makes it worse. 
So part of me is jealous, you know, but I, I'm not going to sit there and say, I, I saw, you know, lots of other people doing it and they seem like it helped them. So who am I to say, you know, I drink coffee. I love coffee every morning. Not everyone loves coffee. Does it make me better or worse? It's just, that's a, a drug that my body likes. Um, who am I to sit here and criticize people for liking something that helps them or makes them feel better was kind of the uh, standpoint I took on it. Mm -hmm. And and as you were like pulling back the layers, as you said, are for the are the layers of the onion, right? Like, you know, according to the VA, I think they said upwards of 20% uh, of the 2.7 million Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, they've experienced post post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. So as you were kind of angry to see that there was an acceptance of alcohol and not an acceptance of cannabis when you saw that that helped your your veteran brothers was that another reason that kind of made you angry a hundred percent i had a really close friend kill himself there's this period in like 2007 2008 when guys were getting out of the military and they would just commit suicide it was like a whole year where guys were just they'd get out and within two weeks of getting out of the military they'd commit suicide and I'd say my first year out of the military is one of the worst years of my life. I just kept wanting to go back, kept wanting to go back. I ended up having a child, had, I don't know, made excuses why I shouldn't go back. And then I had a close friend get out, um, kill himself exactly two weeks after getting out of the military. And it's kind of sad that uh, the military, you know, there could potentially be something there to help people. And they're just not allowing people to do it. Still to this day, they're not allowing people to do it. Right, right. Yeah. And that's a huge problem that we're seeing. And so, did you quickly understand that THC, that particular cannabinoid, just like you said, the psychoactive properties, you just didn't mesh well with, with you, um, but is that what kind of led you to the other cannabinoids, like say CBD? <clears throat> That's exactly right. I, was, uh, I got out of college, um, went to college, got a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering. This whole time I kept seeing more and more law changes. You know, so I got out of the military, started believing in cannabis didn't like it, but I believed in it. Then I saw for the next six years, 2009, 10, 11, 12, up to 14, laws changing. And I just thought to myself, I want to get in that industry. Picked up, moved to Colorado in 2014, uh, got on with an extraction manufacturing company. My job for three years was teaching people how to process marijuana into oil. Loved the job, believed in the industry. It's just not a product that I kept trying and kept trying. It just didn't work for me. As soon as I started hearing about CBD, um, it was, it was real small back then. There were small amounts of CBD in marijuana products that seemed to behave differently, especially for people like me. And then when I found out CBD was in hemp, I was like, man, this could be a, this could be really huge. Just, I'm sure there's more people like me that want relief without that anxiety that it causes for people like us. Wow. So you were such a proponent of the plant because of the benefits that you saw your veteran brothers and others see right when when consuming it even though at the time thc wasn't something that you particularly liked or enjoyed the experience of that psychoactive effect so you any instead of that you still just kind of pursued the industry you worked at that extract lab um basically extracting the thc oils from the marijuana plant and then you you stumbled upon the hemp plant. I'm guessing that was in 2018 when the farm bill passed or 2016, because there was a 2014 farm bill. So in 2014, 2015, people were growing hemp. No one knew what to do with it. There's all this talk of fiber and fuel and just no one hopped on board with that. So around 2016, I started hearing rumors like uh, that hemp's got a lot of CBD in it. Um, so it was late 2016 is when I started Extract Labs. And is at that point, like, talk us, talk to us about like your experience um, experimenting with those products. Like, were you, were you smoking the CBD flower? Were you taking tinctures? And how was that helping? Um, you know, and I'm assuming, you know, you had PTSD. I don't know, but was it helping with any of those maybe, um, you know, ailments that you had post post war? So I heard about CBD being in hemp. I knew that hemp farmers were desperate to find buyers for their hemp. Um, I saw a small niche, what I thought was a small niche. I thought there's only a few people like me out there. I assumed that THC was really the big play. CBD was a step down. No one was doing it. But to me, the dream was if I could, you know, work out of my garage, maybe one day have three or four employees provide a service or a product to a small group of people. To me, that was huge. Um, 
So I started doing this extraction on my garage and yeah, I think I tried smoking a little hemp flower at the time. Hemp was all grown outdoor. It wasn't that good. So it didn't really taste that good. I started making some tinctures for a local guy that he had some cancer patients that swore by it. Um, I had tried it a little bit, definitely was not getting high, but noticed a slight maybe mood change or, or a mind change where I just could, you know, be more level throughout the day it seemed to help. Um, I did not think it helped enough that the world would all hop on board with CBD like they have the last three years. Um, but yeah, as soon as I started doing this, I put the word got out and then, uh, you know, I had semi trucks pulling up in front of my house, dropping off more hemp that I could fit in my garage. And I was like, I need to find a building. And then, uh, we're on our third building now. <laughs> and that, that demand just started coming as people just started understanding the benefits and the different formulations in which this CBD could be extracted and, and used, right. Or consumed. That's exactly right. It started off with tinctures and then I started getting creative. I knew, cause I worked on the marijuana side. I knew that dabs were huge out West, you know, uh, marijuana concentrates, shatters, waxes, so I decided to start like a CBD version of that. Um, it's pretty well known now that everyone knows about CBD dabs, but at the time, CBD shatter, CBD crumble was a brand new thing. I don't want to take all the credit, but I do believe I was there in the very beginning, one of the first people ever creating it. It's, it's new to me. Uh, I'll tell you that because of course I've heard of THC shatter dabs and whatnot, but I didn't realize that people were dabbing CBD. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And a lot of people actually use it, kind of create their own little cocktails. You know, they'll do a THC dab mixed with a little CBD on it. Um, just really kind of manipulate that high a little bit the way they want it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the fact that, you know, there's benefits with THC, obvious benefits with CBD now that that, that part of the market's booming. Do you think it's more of like people are just really attracted to those cannabinoids or is it just speak to how amazing the plant is and, and we're just scratching the surface with learning more about the different cannabinoids within it i truly believe we're just scratching the surface you know we've been at four years for me it feels like a long time but honestly in the realm you know there's 120 cannabinoids out there i think we're selling about six or eight of them today um, we're just now starting to learn how to blend them together better you know it's not just all about cbd it's nice to have maybe some miners in there, or even maybe a three to one ratio of CBD and CBC, CBN, CBG. And a couple of years ago, no one knew what those other cannabinoids helped with. Now there's starting to be a lot more information out there on CBG. We're starting to see a lot more on CBC, CBN. So it's really cool, you know, this evolution. And I, and if we're still, you know, if we're still only four years into an industry, um, who knows where we'll be, you know, in 10 more years. And, uh, and what else we're going to learn about these cannabinoids. We really see ourselves being almost like a pharmaceutical company one day with different blends of these cannabinoids and terpenes. Right. What do you, what do you like foresee being the next, I don't want to say trend, but you know um, really, you know, popular cannabinoid to hit the, hit the market next as we learn more about these. And I think it's already hit, but Delta eight, are you familiar with Delta Delta eight? I am. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's really very popular in the non adult use states, right? Because that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. The industry has found a way, a loophole basically where we're able to convert the CBD molecule into Delta eight THC. Yep. And legally essentially get people high. <laughs> right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've tried Delta eight, um, I obviously prefer Delta 9 THC over Delta 8 be simply because of the fact of what you mentioned in terms of, you know, having other minor cannabinoids, secondary compounds that give you that full, you know, full spectrum, full entourage effect. Um, but I get it. I get why people like it. You know what I mean? Because it does get you high. It does make you feel good. It, it helps you relax and all the other, you know, therapeutic value adds that, that the plant give or the, uh, that a particular you know, molecules. exactly. Yeah. So Delta A is obviously way bigger than I thought it would be. Um, we thought CBG would be huge. So we launched CBG about a year ago. And I think CBG is growing. I just don't think it's the next big thing. Um, it, it's hard to say maybe CBN, maybe CBC. We're pushing hard on both right now because we see CBC has a lot of uh, same properties that like painkillers offer people. It, it um, is attracted to the same receptors. And I've got, I know a few people here that don't even use our CBD, but they love our CBC. 
So it's just interesting. There's 45 people here to see who's attracted to what. Some people are hardcore Delta 9. Some people CBD. We've got a couple people that swear by the CBG. And now the CBC is kind of a... I, I hope it's the next big one because we're one of the only ones out there with it right now. But I was hoping the same thing for CBG. Delta 8 really caught me off guard. I had no idea Delta, Delta 8 would be as big as it is. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm glad you brought up CBC. And that is a unique value proposition uh, that Extract Labs has if you if you have products with CBC in it. Because that's one to me that was kind of new. And I didn't really understand the therapeutic properties. But that so what you're saying is really kind of tied to the pain management side of things and I don't know if I'm if I'm accurately saying this but when you say receptor I'm thinking opioid receptor like in some yeah, way or and I'm I haven't done enough research to say that that's exactly what it's targeted I've just heard people and I've read a little bit of research that it definitely works the same way in your body that like an opioid would obviously not as strong not as addicting but uh, people that are suffering from pain are really more attracted to the CBC and not just pure CBC. That's why we always mix it with something else, some full spectrum CBD. Um, my girlfriend's one who actually uh, ha had a pill problem for a few years. She's now been taking Kratom a lot. She swears that Kratom helps her out. And as mm -hmm. soon as I introduced her to our new CBD, CBC soft gels, that's her new favorite product. She's kind of weaned away from the Kratom. And that's amazing to me. And we had another employee here with a very similar story. Uh, obviously, you know, I take a CBC soft gel. I don't notice a difference. But uh, the people who do, I guess, suffer from those certain ailments uh, really swear by it. Yeah, that is amazing, man. Because, you know, from what I've read with with Kratom, it's been around in, the, in, in Asia, right? And they've been using that that particular plant for thousands of years, right? Hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that it's kind of trickling here and it's helping people get off opioid addiction, even get out of the methadone clinics, right? Yep. Um, there's value there. But if you're saying that CBC, you know, in some cases is a replacement of that, that seems great. Because, you know, in my experience with, with Kratom, while yes, it, that has those benefits, it still kind of gives you some of the side effects that opioids would in that like constipation, you know, you kind of, um, I, I agree. I tried it and I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, um, but again, everyone's different. We all react differently to different things, you know, and you mentioned CBN. I think that that's going to be another major one that's going to take off simply because of the sleep aspect that it provides. Right. Yep. Exactly. And there's, you know, the sleep industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. If CBN really can compete with some of these um, volumes or whatever, then, uh, or what's, what's the big uh, sleep medicine that everyone's taking? Uh, is it the Xanax, the um, benzodiazepines or? Uh... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but if CBN can actually compete in that market and actually get people off of those drugs that we all know are bad for us, that they work very well, but they're bad for us. If CBN can actually do that, then you're right. CBN will be a huge cannabinoid. Well, and that's what people, you know, guests that I've had on, they talk about this notion of the future of medicine, right? And that is what's in, like really, really fascinating to me is you talk about, you know, perhaps CBN could be a replacement for those, for those other kind of, you know, sleep aid medications and, and, you know, perhaps CBD or THC can be replaced with others. That's really what's so fascinating about the plan is how you can dial in Yes, I agree. Really target ailments, right? With based on wh whatever cannabinoid it is. You know? And that's what when back when in 2016, when I started learning about uh, CBD, and then around early 2017, what you just described, you know, played out in your head about, oh my God, like I could put it here, I could do this with it, I could do this with that. That's when my mind just like blew, and I was like, I've got to focus on this. This is going to be huge one day. Yeah, and and last point on on the minor cannabinoid discussion, I I just published uh, my episode with Dr. Jonathan Bott today. He's the founder and CEO of uh, Front Range Biosciences. And oh, okay. yeah, and they just launched a new line of THCV products. Have you heard of THCV? We have, and we're trying to figure out ways to concentrate it more so we can actually make products with it. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, this is all anecdotal. We're not saying this is all hard science because of course, due to the federal regulation, you know, we're still learning this stuff, but 
from what evidence has shown thcv uh, serves as an appetite suppressant so interesting yeah opposite of getting the munchies you yeah know, it, it kind of helps with dietary restrictions and what which is a massive industry that's a multi-billion dollar industry multi-billion and mm-hmm. along with a lot of other different things i mean even they've said that alzheimer's patients tend to really respond well to thcv for some reason so that's interesting yeah it's very fascinating man um but you know we're like we said we're just scratching the surface and we're we're in a we're in the position at the right time to to be at the forefront of it all you know i agree i agree yeah well tell me about extract labs so like uh obviously a lot of the business uh cannabis businesses like every other industry was hit by covid but there was really a resurgence of the industry so talk about how y'all you know, got through the the real thick of the pandemic last year. Obviously, we're not out of it. Um, and tell us what your future goals are in 2021 and beyond. Yeah, so um, the way we survived 2020 is we worked. We showed up to work. We continued working. We saw it as an opportunity. You know, you're in a marathon race and you uh, twist your ankle. Do you, you step aside? Yeah, no one's going to give you a hard time for stepping aside. It's the right thing to do. You're not going to get judged for it. But what if you just suck it up and keep pushing forward and finish the race? Um, that's what we noticed. All of our competitors, everyone's working from home. Everyone just shut down business for a month, two months, three months. We saw it as an opportunity if we're willing to show up to work and just keep hustling that we could potentially come out on top. And we did. We saw our online e-commerce sales double, if not triple last year. Um, wholesale obviously took a dip because stores around the nation were closed but the wholesale customers we did have, we held on to, and they appreciate the customer service in the short shipping times and just us being at work, which a lot of people did not do last year. Mm -hmm. So us coming to work on like the majority of the world really helped us out. Um, That's very, sorry to pause you, but that's, I I mean, that's, that's, I got to commend you guys on that because that, that is important. I mean, there, there is times where people just kind of, I'm not saying throwing in the towel or anything, but you know, when you're told to do something and operate a certain way, you know, they kind of just shut off and, and kind of wait things out, but you guys kept per- persevering, kept striving ahead and fighting. We had the Boulder health department calling us. We had people trying to shut us down. We just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. Like was, was this before uh, cannabis businesses were deemed essential? And that, that was the thing is because we weren't, you know, dispensaries were deemed essential. Um, people, laboratories were deemed essential, but we still had the city of Boulder still trying to give us a hard time. Um, and, it, and I tried explaining to them what we were doing. We were trying, we were maintaining distance. We had 13,000 square feet, two shifts of employees, you know, 35 people. It was really easy for us to keep our distance, right. but people were still complaining. Employees weren't showing up to work. So they're like, uh, I was told by the governor, I need to stay home. And I was like, you're an essential business. You need to get to work. So we, you know, we fired a lot of people. Um, If you don't want to show up to work, you're not going to work here kind of thing. Right, right. And so at that point, um, it really probably helped you focus on people that you want to hire that would be a good fit for that type of environment, right? That hustle, that grind, like not stopping, moving ahead. That's exactly right. Yeah. If you want to sit around, watch the news all day and worry about what the governor's saying and just follow what everyone else is doing, we don't want you here. We're looking for people not trying to break the rules. You know, we can still be safe, but we can also hustle and show up to work every day. Yeah. No, I appreciate that mindset, man, because, you know, and I've tweeted this before, like no politician is going to save you. <laughs> you no, know, they're not. <laughs> red, red or blue, whoever mm-hmm. it is, you know, um, and it could sound like a broken record and I'm not trying to be that guy, pull up, you know, your boots by your bootstraps and, but you got to take accountability for yourself at some point. And like you said, sitting around just watching the news all day um, is not healthy one. And it's, it's Mm -hmm. not, it's not productive either, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the future outlook for, for extract labs. Like what are y'all focused on uh, for this year and, and in the coming years with all this momentum that we're seeing in the industry? That's it. Just trying to keep that momentum. In April 2019, you know, the industry had seen it's definitely its peak momentum. And everyone between, you know, 2016 and April 2019, the industry was growing out of control. You didn't even have to be good at what you did. People were just overpaying for stuff. And then in April, you know, when all these companies thought they could never be hurt, the industry took a huge dip. Since April 2019, up until you know last year, we just kept seeing bankruptcy, bankruptcy, bankruptcy. We took a massive hit. Our sales got cut in half. 
But luckily, we've always been privately owned. We didn't owe a bunch of money to investors. We were able to make it through. We kept just doing what, what I said, just kept showing up to work, kept hustling. We're coming out on top. So now that we're starting to see this momentum again that we picked up in 2020, we're just trying not to lose that, trying not to get comfortable, trying not to just you know assume that we figured it out. So our goal is constantly making new products. I don't want to fall behind the ball, you know, fall behind. Delta 8 came out. I feel like we were six months late getting a Delta 8 product to market. Um, and I don't want to do that again. That's what we're trying to be the first on CBC, CBG, CBN, THCV. I think it's going to be the next big one. So just keep that momentum, not get comfortable. We're looking at buying a new building this year. Uh, kind of spread out in multiple buildings in Boulder. If we can just get under one roof and have some more space, we could take on more projects. Mm -hmm. And th would those projects, would any of them include like expansion outside of Colorado or future capital raises or even maybe going public at some point? We've talked about it. Uh, that's one thing I don't know a lot about. I don't know much about going public. I don't know much about investors. This has all just been something I've started, you know, with a few thousand dollars. Um, and that hasn't been a priority now. We've been profitable. We're making our own money. We've seen people taking money from investors. They see this huge spike and they they get you know a lot of recognition. They get these new buildings, this new equipment. Then six months later, they go bankrupt or they're having to take on more investors and the CEO loses his job. Um, right. So it makes me real nervous just taking on money unless we know what we need it for. And today, I feel like we've got a pretty clear vision of where we're heading and we don't need the money. So I'm not looking for money today. Um, as for new projects, we're just trying to bring more of the manufacturing in-house. I'd say 90% of what, all of our products are manufactured in-house. We use a few third parties uh, for like making our soft gels or making our gummies. It'd be nice to bring those production capabilities in-house or a huge missing piece in the market is drop shipping. Everyone and their brother is a CBD company online, but they don't manufacture their own products. They don't ship their own products. Um, or at least they don't want to ship their own products. They're looking for companies to do drop shipping for them. We've really, I feel like, mastered some of the shipping uh, pieces of the puzzle. So we're getting really good at shipping. So if we could do more drop shipping for some of the smaller companies, that'll allow us to take on their business, meaning we could white label their products for them, ship for them, and then they can really focus on what they're doing best, you know, e-commerce, social media. Right, right. Yeah, because I mean, it's hard. I mean, you mentioned white labeling, it seems like a pretty good option at this point for brands that want to enter the space, just because it's very, I mean, saturated, right? There's so many different companies out there. It's really hard to, to be vertically integrated and do it all yourself, right? Extremely hard. That's why we even outsource a little bit of our stuff. Um, but the things we're good at, we try to continue to build on and hopefully offer that as a service to other companies. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Sounds like it. Well, Craig, I want to give you the floor before we wrap up. Like, is there anything that you want to leave the audience with? Not really. Just keep following us. Uh, keep waiting for what we do next. Like I said, those new cannabinoids is something we're focused on. Tinctures is what the rest of the world is focused on. Every single CBD company out there just has 18 different tinctures or at least six different tinctures. I just don't see that that's the way of medicine. I don't think people like ingesting a nasty tasting tincture every day. Um, so soft gels, more medicinal forms of this medicine, um, smokables, dabs are really still picking up, but, uh, yeah, we're just trying to do things a little bit different. Everyone else is doing alcohol extraction. We're focused on CO2 extraction, really trying to put out a cleaner full spectrum oil and hopefully we can continue to do that. Absolutely. Hey, well, I appreciate, uh, your time, Craig and your service in the military, um, and thanks for talking to me about your transition from combat to cannabis, our discussion about minor and major cannabinoids, and uh, all that Extract Labs is doing and uh, the future outlook for the company. So I want to run it back with you, man, in a couple of months as the industry evolves, all right? I'd love to. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. This was just a great conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. Thank Bye. you. Bye.